Hi, everybody. Okay. Carl Freund again with Cambrian AI Research. Uh, I've got a very special guest for you. I know I always say I have a special guest, but this time I really do have a very special guest. Now, Roger Kaduri is joining us from India. So uh, we're on different time zones right now. But uh, Roger's just recently been announced as joining the board of directors of Tinstorm. Welcome, Roger. Hey, uh, Carl, good to see you again and uh, good to be on this call. Early morning time in India, so I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. And, uh, Roger and I used to work together at AMD, so we do have some uh, history together. Um, a lot's changed since then. A lot's changed. I, I, I would say I have less hair, but I didn't have much hair then, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Roger's been kind of the moon and back, uh, most recently at Intel, where he just uh, he just left about, about a month ago. So, Roger, is that right? No, actually, March 31st was my official last day at Intel. March so, 31st. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I won't embarrass you by asking you to tell us where you're going. I know you've got a lot of opportunities, with ma'am, with your resume. <laughs> uh, so let's let's talk about let's talk about Tens Torrent. Um, I've I've had uh, Tens Torrent on my radar screen since since the company was first founded because I thought mm -hmm. what they were doing in open software and in their their AI hardware was very interesting. But since then, the Jim the Keller taking over as CEO, they've they really pivoted more to, to include um, uh, RISC-V uh, technology. Can, can you just kind of at a high level, Roger, what did you see in Tenstar? What, what got you excited enough to join their board of directors? Yeah, uh, Carl, I, you know, apart from the obvious first reason, <laughs> you know, I yeah. just mentioned it, which, which being, which be, which being Jim uh, himself, right, and the uh, uh, opportunity once again to collaborate with Jim, um, the, you know, that, 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 that's the, you know, the top part of it, let's just say, right, and, uh, um, and the other things are, uh, you know, risk five uh, is being, I've been intr intrigued by the possibilities of the RISC-V ecosystem uh, for a while. Um, and I must admit, I was a little skeptical um, at the beginning. Uh, the reason being not the technical issues with it. Uh, the thing I was skeptical is, um, how would uh, a, uh, you know, a ecosystem of multiple companies uh, collaborate to build a, a product, right? You know, mm -hmm. that uh, it accomplishes a certain thing. You know, all my corporate experience <laughs> being in big companies, uh, I found it challenging even within a company to get, uh, you know, multiple teams to collaborate, to, you know, to get a, a vision uh, translated to a product, right? It's, uh, uh, it's been, uh, you know, and I'll write a book about it at some point of time, but it's been a challenge. And I said, you know, and in an open ecosystem where these guys all have independent companies, independent stuff, while it sounds great, how do I get a product uh, out mm -hmm. that uses all this stuff? So that was my skepticism. But, uh, you know, when once I started talking to Jim uh, and looked at his overall strategy, you know, uh, what he's doing in Tenstorrent, which is great, but, you know, Jim also planted an uh, interesting number of seeds around other things, like, you know, server SOC design, uh, fabric, <clears throat> you know, atomic semi, <laughs> right, for, you know, building chips and stuff, that's the crazy end of the spectrum, but um, the seeds that, um, you know, Jim planted uh, in Tensorant and beyond Tensorant, you know, it started to kind of, you know, uh, kind of a light bulb went off that, hey, I see something that connects these seeds that this could become an interesting garden, right, you know, very soon in the next three, four years and become a kind of a giant ecosystem in itself with the way these connected seeds will sprout and all. And the, the overall strategy that Jim is taking, and now I'm here in India, uh, uh, you know, uh, talking to much of the ecosystem is not, hey, us, you know, me versus my IP versus your IP, uh, my SOC versus your SOC. Um, the collaborative approach where the knowledge is being shared between all of these entities and rooting for each other's success, right? You know, because there are enough chip designs that need to be done that no one team 
can take care of all the opportunities. So rather than like, you know, just one company trying to do like say a, a, a high performance server design, we are taking this approach of like, yeah, you know, encourage six of that, right? Because the market size, if you just think about it, is large enough for all of these people, <laughs> right? If you put the current, you know, non, um, you know, open uh, incumbents in the, in the industry, they are worth over a trillion dollars of market cap, right? You know, between all the big company. So the risk five ecosystem has more than a trillion dollar, just silicon opportunity. I'm not mm-hmm. talking, you know, software services, variety of other stuff. So, um, so I, I saw that, you know, that, that the dots are getting, you know, beginning to connect and my kind of, you know, my enthusiasm to help with, uh, you know, all of the, um, everything I learned, you know, and, and, and especially the, the scars in the back, <laughs> right, are your best uh, teachers, right, mm-hmm. of, uh, right, you know, what, what worked, how, how did, uh, what are the big challenges of making, you know, multiple teams work together, how to bring an architecture together. Uh, and when you have an ecosystem that is m- motivated uh, all in the same direction, uh, I'm finding it actually even just the two days in India, uh, it, a lot easier to connect them uh, up and say, hey, here is an IT, here is an SOC, here is a target, here is a packaging technology, here is, uh, you know, what a leadership, uh, you know, HPC uh, socket might look like and how can, you know, one, two, three collaborate to build this HPC socket and then also bring the, you know, connect the customer. Hey, here is a customer who's willing to write you the first check, right? So yeah. let's get this going, right? So. Uh, so I saw that opportunity, right? You know, to to help the ecosystem and uh, to you know, and, and Jim is uh, you know definitely you know instigated uh, uh, quite a number of seeds. So I know it's a long-winded way, but I just see that it is the beginning. Uh, you know, I saw the, that there is a, a tremendous uh, uh, momentum here in this ecosystem. Yeah, well, obviously I should mention you and Jim are in India to uh, uh, attend, and in fact, I think Jim gave the keynote at the Risk Five Summit in, in India uh, yesterday, I believe. Um, yeah. And s- how many people att- are attending the conference? Is it, is it, is it a success? Oh, huge. Uh, there are over, uh, you know, uh, 500 uh, people. And these are all like real hands-on design engineers, right? Like, you know, <laughs> nerds talking to nerds, right? And, uh, and the sessions uh, were also like, you know, like what they're going... Kind of deep into uh, verification, like you know, how do you make sure that uh, the course you're doing or the IP you're doing, like you know, and the tool uh, that they're building in the ecosystem for uh, making formal verification automated, uh, you know, post silicon uh, easier, the simulation infrastructures and all. I was just, uh, you know, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm still probably uh, haven't completely my mind got gotten out of my uh, corporate life past. I was jealous, right? I was like, wait, I could be using these tools, but I'm stuck inside with proprietary tools, proprietary stuff, proprietary things that are actually behind what these guys have in the ecosystem. Yeah. And so wow. super clean, comes with full source code, right? It's like, you know, so the designer in me is just like, you know, just, oh, I want to get back to actually, you know, working with a small team and building something <laughs> with these oh, guys' okay. tools. Oh, right? exactly. they're, yeah. yeah, they're all open. They're all like, you know, the simulators are open, right? You know, the, the Berkeley guys, like, you know, it's, uh, have uh, an excellent, uh, you know, both uh, pre silicon architecture simulators uh, and, uh, uh, and you know, C models, functional simulator, performance simulator frameworks. So for a, if you're a chip design nerd, and you just look at the type of tools that are uh, that the ecosystem is building in the in this risk five uh, envelope. <laughs> you are just like, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, you're chomping at the bits. So I was at I was at the Synopsis Users Group meeting last week in Santa Clara, and 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 talking talking with with folks there about ch- the the future of of chiplets. Uh, w- one of the interesting aspects that perhaps I hadn't given enough thought, and perhaps, and you can perhaps shed some light is the governance of the IP of, of chiplets, right? So if, I, if I'm gonna build an SOC and I'm gonna take this, this, this chiplet from TensTorrent and this chiplet from Synopsys and this chiplet from wherever, and I'm gonna build it all together and I'm gonna use you know, UCIE to connect them all and all that stuff's great technically, but how do I know 
that the chiplet I'm buying hasn't been tampered with? How do I know it, it can be trusted um, it, to, to behave <laughs> yeah. as it's supposed yeah. to behave and not behave yeah. as a, 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 uh, a, a spy trying to get into my system to, 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 to wreak habit? Is, is, are there discussions like that taking place as well? Yeah, so, uh, you know, again, you mentioned chiplets, right? I, I have uh, probably the most PTSD about chiplets in the entire industry, right? It's like <laughs> nobody has done more chiplets uh, in the industry. And it's not, That's for I'm, sure. I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm, not, by the way, I'm not, I'm not bragging about this. It is more like, you know, admission of guilt uh, than, <laughs> than bragging. You know, starting, okay. Okay. Yeah, all the way back from, you know, like 2000, uh, you know, 13, 14, uh, you know, we did the first uh, HBM integration, right? You know, PG at AMD was the first <laughs> two and a half right. integration in, in consumer space, right? <laughs> so, and, and, and there was lots of learning there, right? And how to get uh, a, an, an entire uh, packaging assembly pipeline going that doesn't exist and the costs of it and, you know, so th there's lots of uh, uh, learnings. So, uh, you know, the UCIE consortium and uh, the chiplet uh, uh, discussions, I, I believe are in the right direction, um, but, you know, you're bringing up a few things there. There is a lot of depth and detail that need to be sorted out. So the hype uh, index of chiplets, in my opinion, is far ahead of, you know, yeah. getting some of the basics sorted out, mm -hmm. right? And especially when it comes to uh, high, uh, high bandwidth designs, um, uh, you know, where the bandwidth between these chiplets is, you know, is multi terabytes per second, let's just say, there's a whole boatload of issues that need yeah. to be sorted out. Now, if the bandwidth is low bandwidth stuff, See, that in many ways is a solved problem. See, if you just you know, ignore the hype, we have been doing chiplets for a long time. We've been either putting them on a motherboard or on, you know, uh, or on a, a standard uh, packaging substrate, right? You know, the, the CPUs and IO chiplets, you know, even going back Northbridge, Southbridge and CPU, we had three different chiplets, right? <laughs> Assembled for mobile, we put them on a, you know, a, a small uh, TD board, integrated them in a different ways. So they're, you know, they're chiplets, but we had, well-defined interfaces on, you know, to North Bridge and South Bridge and all. So it's kind of back to the same thing with the new terminology for those stuff, right? We had security sorted out, we had, you know, whatever kind of things. But the real issue you bring to forth is that when I integrate two chiplets and they're sharing caches, for example, okay? So, mm -hmm. you know, that's when some of this kind of, you know, things that you're talking about, uh, you know, come about. But if they're sharing caches, it's a very high bandwidth interconnect going on between them too, right? And so, and you know, so that space is a very tricky one. And also, I, I'm also skeptical about this whole thing that I build a chiplet, okay, and I put it on shelf for somebody else to so somebody to pick up, right? You know, a library of chiplet concept. See, a chip chiplet is a chip, right? It's a, it's a full silicon, okay. A taping out is. You know, yeah, it's not IP. A, a, a multiple double digit millions of dollars. Okay, so it's it's at least, a, you know, the, a, to get a chip like that, it's $100, 150000000 million. Okay, imagine a business model where I say I spend all this money and I just put it on shelf and wait for something to happen. Okay, that doesn't sound, you know, very interesting. It's, it's, it's basically, right, if I have a chiplet, I need revenues right away as soon as, you know, I have it in hand, right? Because I spent so much money. So I, I think the chiplet ecosystem and this whole chiplet hype cycle, uh, you know, has to get a little adjusted. And then there are issues like the security you bring and other stuff. There is a, a whole boatload of things that need to be sorted out. But I am optimistic that these will get sorted out, right? And, uh, and you know, part of the reason now that I'm, uh, you know, in the open ecosystem and, uh, <laughs> and and can help these companies and you know just translate my scars into wisdom for somebody, right? <laughs> and this stuff. So you know, with together with Jim, we are already talking. Right? Well, how does the first SOC server SOC come together with this? You know, four or five chiplets being built by three different companies, right? Or two different or three different companies. So 
all this issue, by the way, there's another one, which is even yeah, as complicated as the security stuff or whatever, right? Is power management, right? How, how are all this, you know, what's the power management protocol? Yeah. Who's, who's doing what? Power, right, you're sharing yeah, the same yeah, power. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. are they all like, you know, doing their own stuff? And is there a central guy? There is a central guy, uh, right, you know, that's doing something. What's the spec for that? You know, so you have to agree on a whole bunch of details up front at the product level for the chiplet to actually make any sense at a product level, right? So it's not, it's not IP, right? You know, soft IP sitting on shelf that I pick up, I make modifications at the boundary to the stuff I get from synopsis and cadence to fit it into my SOC. So chiplets are not soft SOCs, <laughs> so, sorry, soft IPs, right? So, so it, it, there is more to it, right? While there's a lot I'm, more work uh, to be done. Yeah, there is a lot more work to be a lot done. More that, work. That, I agree. I think the, the yeah. hype is ahead of the reality here, especially yeah. for multi-company multi chiplet designs as opposed to let's say AMD or Intel or somebody building. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I like I said, I had, I had enough challenges for inside the company chiplet design to get align all these things, okay? It's just like the majority of my gray hair is that. Okay, for the last, exactly. like, it, it is just getting these teams aligned on a particular thing. That's and hard they enough. All, <laughs> and, 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 they all, and, and even when they all worked for me, it was hard. <laughs> right? That's right. So, so, so there's clearly too much hype, I believe, in chiplets, uh, but it, it's, it's well placed. I think it's going someplace wonderful. What about Risk Five? Let's get let's tie this back to Risk Five. I mean, the hype around Risk Five right now is starting to. To, to uh, let's say specifically risk five in the data center, not, not embedded. It's already well established and embedded as, as a major force in the industry. But in the data center, is it where do you think that hype's going to go? When would we actually be able to see risk five based servers in the data center? Or will they main, will they remain more of an element in an SOC for a you know a domain specific uh, architecture? So uh, at the conference um, uh, yesterday, right on stage, uh, they, uh, the Bodhi computing guys demonstrated um, a full uh, web server, uh, WordPress uh, web server running on uh, the RISC-V uh, um, emulator, right? You know, full, fl full fledged, right? And the stuff, um, which is very, very encouraging for me. Right, and, and it's not just like, you know, some hello world or like the stuff they had a <laughs> full web server running on <laughs> uh, stuff. So I think the first um, serious product, right, with, you know, interesting amount of code count and, you know, within the, you know, performance level. So it doesn't have to beat, uh, you know, the existing, uh, you know, 86 leadership designs and all, but if it is within, you know, the ballpark, within 20%, uh, performance levels of the leadership stuff and just runs the Linux stack, right? Like you check it in the stuff. That moment, the first product moment when that happens, which I think is imminent in the next, you know, 24 months or so, or maybe 36, right? I, I'm just learning about the ecosystem as I got. That is the, uh, you know, I think the moment that risk crime has arrived, right? When we all see that, hey, there is a, 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 an SOC and a platform with, uh, you know, the BIOS, the software and all running, booting and just running, you know, uh, <laughs> or a web server or like, you know, the, 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 the whole thing. Uh, and, and I think that right after that moment, the first moment of that, it will be, a, the curve will be pretty rapid. So yeah. if, if you're way, if people, uh, my, my caution to the ecosystem and people, if you're waiting until that moment, you may be a bit late, <laughs> right? Because okay. right in the stuff, I, I, it is going to happen. It is going to happen. It's the, the question is just when, not if, right? Um, and is that 25? Is that 2026? Is that 2027? Right, you know, where that knee in that curve is going to happen is stuff. Mm -hmm. You know that I'll be like watching along with you and yeah. others, like in the debated. Yeah. Breath. I think the my, my impression, and disagree if you if if you, if you feel so, feel so inclined. My impression is the first opportunity in the data center, not as a standalone server and replacing an ARM or x86 uh, socket, but really in what 
Tensorn is doing, which is combining the RIS-5 with your own, uh, in your case, uh, AI-centric um, yeah, design. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That, no, I, that, that yeah, seems but, to me like, why would you use ARM? I, 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 I mean, yeah, I think it's no, ARM. It's great yeah. stuff. I, I work yeah. for an ARM company. It's good stuff. But yeah. today, I would no, think, I, why would you use RIS-5? I, I totally agree with you, Carl. Uh, but my point is, the utility of that application that you just described, right? See, if my basic software stack, right, you know, is running, right, you know, Linux is running and like, you know, the virtual machines are running, uh, then uh, the uh, utility of such a uh, design with like, you know, risk file cores and the AI stuff and an AI compute server, let's just call it, right, becomes very practical, right? So the mm -hmm. software moment I described that it is just a functional, wow stuff the, that once that baseline is solid see if that baseline is not solid you're hacking around you know getting basics running and all and that's never you know your software is the bottleneck right you know that is the bottleneck and the stuff so you got is, yeah. <laughs> software. Yeah, yeah exactly so <laughs> having the first clean design that just runs the entire linux stack and with virtualization and all that stuff it doesn't on the cpu performance it doesn't have to like i said beat the world just have to be credible and there, but it has to be robust and everything just works. When that moment happens, the knee in the curve happens, yeah, right? right. Yeah. Was, uh, well, it'll be fun watching Tense Torrent now with you on board, working closer with Jim. I mean, the three of us work at A&D together, we do some great stuff, but I think the future is so bright. We've, we've all seen the iPhone moment, as people say, with uh, chat GPT. Uh, I, I don't think we even begin to comprehend where this is going. But we know yeah. at the base, it's yeah. going to be in a facility and it will enable it. I think the I think the real iPhone moment or the iPhone uh, realization of the I, iPhone promise for uh, AI happens when uh, we can bring uh, the access to uh, you know large language models for everyone. Like you know even like you know, Carl should have yeah. his own Carl GPT, right? Uh, for that, the the, the, the compute needs to be much more accessible for everybody, right? You know, the cost of training a model and deploying a model at scale has to come down, you know, a lot, you know, a thousand X more. Right, yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. that is what, you know, the, the, to me, the big moment for the risk five ecosystem is really to kind of, you know, bring that to, okay. you know, a much more affordable levels that like, you know, every uh, one can afford, uh, you know, like I said, I'm sitting here in India, like, you know, the, the, it's a, a entirely different cost structure, right? You know, there is a lot of enthusiasm by the players here to build their own data centers, right? They want to build like an incredible number of data centers here in India, but the cost structure has to be very, very different. Right, yeah. so you know, just like the car example we were talking about, you know, you can't, I can't have an you know AI computer at twenty thousand dollars, right? It has to be a couple of hundred dollars yeah. for a, mil a million vehicles to have, uh, you know, AI in them, right? So, uh, and and there is no reason, there is no physics reason, uh, I see uh, why the cost won't come down. There are lots of economic reasons, business model reasons, margin stacking reasons why you know <laughs> there are obstacles. But there is no like fundamental physics reasons why the cost of uh, you know the, the base base level AI computing can be a couple of hundred bucks or even lower. Or even lower. Well, for those uh, who are unfamiliar with Tense Torrent, I've just published a new white paper on Tense Torrent, kind of explaining understanding and explaining the the strategy that Jim has for the company. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that on our website, CameronAI.com. And uh, Raja, I, I, I hope we can do this again. I, I think- Yeah, uh, no, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it, it, a, lot absolutely. Of fun, a lot of fun talking with you again. Look forward to working with you again and, and watching what TenseTorrent does. Uh, uh, there are a lot of startups out there. And, and mm -hmm. my view is that TenseTorrent is one of the potential winners. Going up against NVIDIA is tough. And I think Jim has a strategy that, that kind of avoids that, uh, that, that bloody outcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said- Somebody asked yesterday about this stuff, and uh, I said, uh, right now, if you're in any of this technology space, whether you want it or not, uh, you know, you uh, given the breadth uh, of uh, uh, offerings and the whole end-to-end uh, -end platform strategy NVIDIA has, 
whether you're doing software, hardware, or whatever, it's hard not bumping into competing yeah. with them. <laughs> so you can you you can you have to go to a different planet to not compete. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Five on right. Mars. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Jensen might have Jensen might have a strategy for that. I don't know. But, uh, it'll be it'll be a fun ride. That's that's for sure. Real pleasure talking to you again. Thanks for your time today. I'll let you get on to your your Miss Five today. Uh, in Thank India, you. And uh, so let's stay in touch. Let's do this again. Yeah. Thanks, Carl. Bye. All right. Thanks, Roger.